The extremeness of having cancer at that age, the derailment of a normal young person's trajectory to, to being an adult, they had college, they finished in high school, they've just graduated from college, they may be newly wed, they are not yet rooted in where they are. So when they get the diagnosis of cancer, it can be a major derailment. I was scared beyond belief. You know, I just graduated college, UCI, um, and just got a job, you know, starting my life. You know, this is the moment that we as young adults want and we're waiting for to start our life finally. And so right when I felt like I was about to start my life and partake this adult journey that I'm, you know, that everyone's looking forward to, um, I felt like my life just stopped. I looked over at my husband. We'd only been married for about a year and a half. And you just look over and you're just in shock. You feel like your story will never be the same. Your life is never the same. It was five weeks before the wedding. I went in for a colonoscopy to get things checked out, and I found out the very next day that the tumor was malignant. Well, I was just starting my career. I worked for two years as, as a physical therapist in a, in, in a hospital setting and then in an outpatient setting. So, you know, all my impairments now are all physical, so obviously I can't go back to my career. I was 22 years old, just got back from an amazing trip in Hawaii. Um, I had just lost bunch of weight, doing everyday life, um, went, got off the treadmill, like scheduled, same thing every day, um, felt a lump in my leg, something that was obviously not supposed to be there. I was kind of uh, lucky to just go to the hospital at the right time, but um, by then it was um, stage four, I guess it had spread, it started in the testicle, it had spread to some lymph nodes, some sections of veins. It went to my left kidney, which they removed. It went to my liver. Um, some spots in my lungs, and I think that's uh, gallbladder also. Like I was just um, going to school, working a ton, you know, going out, doing all the young things. I still danced, and, um, and now with this, it's like I, um, ha I've just had to make this my priority. I decided from the very beginning I wouldn't take it as a tragedy or anything because I didn't want to think it was it would lead to any sort of demise at all. Ovarian cancer has different losses attached to um, the osteogenic sarcoma of the loss of a limb. Even though there are two losses, with the loss of the limb compared to the ovarian cancer loss, I think I was able to overcome so much even though I didn't have a leg. I mean, I was heavily involved in sports, I was skiing, I was doing all the normal things. I mean, I was really depressed, really, really depressed, you know. And I, I was playing it off, like, really well, you know, because for the most part, I, you know, in front of everyone else, I was really trying to be positive. But inside by myself, you know, I was just, I was dying inside. So there was a lot of crying and, um... I think your body is going and your mind is going through shock. I still was going to work. Uh, I went to work still for about a week and, you know, people come up and say, oh, hi, how are you doing? And you want to say, horrible. I'm doing horrible. I was just diagnosed with breast cancer. I had my half an hour of crying at the beginning, but then that was it. I had to roll my sleeves up and just accept that it's part of my life right now until it's finished. So it's just a challenge that I have to overcome. So it, it, it kind of left a huge gap in what I was going to do. I mean, everything I'd been working for was, you know, kind of wiped away, you know. So I really had to figure out what, what I was going to do with the rest of my life. So I literally went from surgery to wedding to fertility preservation, having my port inserted straight into chemo with no break. And I gave myself my first fertility shot after the ceremony, before the reception on the day of my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I did everything that a normal two-legged person could do. So I was able to overcome that particular loss versus with the ovarian cancer, you're talking the loss of you know, not being able to have children, having to go for a total hysterectomy, having to go into this new world of menopause when at 38 you're 
you don't expect that. You expect that at 50, late 50s or 60s and, you know, not having been able to have children and wanting children, this is something that naturally that it was a loss that was on a much different level than the loss of my leg. I had my first surgery I'd ever had and I woke up and my dad was, you know, by my bedside and said, it's cancer. And I thought, okay, cool, we'll move on, you know. I've had a few moles removed that were cancerous but weren't so bad, so I figured it was the same thing. And he said, no, it's cancer. You start to accept certain things. And I think in my mind, I had two different lists. I had a list of things I can accept now, things I can't accept, and I need some more time to adjust to. So um, I, can, I can accept that I have breast cancer and I'm only 31. Things I can't accept is that I might not be able to breastfeed ever. So that went on the other list. Like, let's not think about that. Um, I might not be able to carry the children. You know, all those different things. I might get a reoccurrence, all that stuff. That went on the other list. And just what I could focus on right then went on the list. Like, I can handle this. I can accept it. I'm going to get through this. And that's kind of how I dealt with it. You know, that, I think that was my biggest fears. I didn't want things to go bad and have my daughter not remember me. You know, that was my biggest fear out of everything. Like, I didn't care if I died. I just want my daughter to remember me. You know, I wasn't looking for this to happen. Um, this was something that was very unexpected, and I was so afraid that you know, I wasn't going to get the chance to experience everything that I wanted to do. Um, I think that was really hard. And to be forced to make decisions that I didn't want to make yet, you know, if, if I wanted to have kids, you know, what I was going to do about that. Um, you know, could I even get married? Could I start a family? It, it, it was really hard because it forced me to make a lot of decisions that I'm not ready to make yet, you know that I haven't really thought about yet. And so that was really hard. I've had to really shift my focus and priorities, but I definitely make sure it doesn't rule my life because I have cancer, cancer doesn't have me. Everyone who's young kind of tend to think that they're, you know, indestructible, so you just, you know, minor, I mean, one, one year checkup, you don't even, you know, bother to think what's the consequence of not, you know, checking yourself, but. Because uh, sometimes you learn the hard way. <laughs> you think because you're young, you're invincible. So that's kind of my thing. No, you're not. <laughs>